as we have uh, suggested, uh, George has been a, a lawyer for a good many years, uh, has headed up the Senate along the way, uh, been in public and private practice as well, and uh, has been uh, ready to fill the, the shoes, large shoes as they have been, of one Dick Blumenthal, who is, of course, uh, running for Senate this go around to. Have, have you ever seen such a strange year in Connecticut politics? Uh, such an active year, George. You know, 0, 06 with the Lamont Lieberman primary was was That was just one race. I mean, well, this one it, has got them all but, over the but place. But in terms of like a generational shift and, and uh, you know, uh, Chris Dodd's decision not to seek re-election uh, sent off a, a, a chain of events, you know, that includes uh, I, I guess only uh, Denise Napier is an incumbent Holy running forth. for re-election. And uh, so we're, it's going to be a sea change, uh, a generational shift. Boy, it, it really is. Uh, and uh, uh, your opponent is one who is uh, not unfamiliar to uh, the race for attorney general, Martha Dean. Yeah, she ran in 2002 against Dick Blumenthal. Yeah. Uh, and um, you know, she's a, 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 a nice person. I've, I've met her. I've known her a little bit. Uh, you know, she's a, a good human being. Uh, you know, I think that you know, as a as a National Rifle Association member and proud advocate, as a tea bagger and and a, and a cultural conservative, I think she's outside the mainstream of of the Connecticut electorate. But that'll be a decision the electorate will make. Well, now, how does it work in this case? Uh, do, do we have uh, debates lined up, things like that? That that go on? I, I have accepted. It's, it's a little different in yeah. the Attorney General's uh, race. Well, she, she, she faces a primary first. She has an August 10 primary with a, a lawyer from uh, Greater Hartford, uh, and uh, we'll see who, who survives that, mm -hmm. that primary. I have accepted one debate uh, request that's being sponsored by the, um, the Law uh, Tribune in Connecticut, and that's in September sometime, and I'm sure there'll be other debates or joint appearances as well, but we'll, we'll see how the dust settles after August 10th. You know, it, politically, there there are lots of things to uh, to be discussed in a, a political debate. Uh, what do we what do we get down to in terms of uh, legalese in, in debate? Well, I, in in this case, it's it's going to be a, it's about qualifications. Uh, we'll talk about that in one second. Also, about your vision for the office. As I mentioned earlier, I I have a I have Dick Blumenthal's values, and I share his activist outlook on the office. And I think that will contrast with whoever the Republican opponent is. Uh, the other uh, major difference between myself and both Republicans is that while they have a long career as practicing lawyers, not as long as mine, uh, a big part of the job is, is being a successful advocate on issues that matter. Mm -hmm. uh, being able to, it's not easy to, 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 to lead a fight on whether it's consumer protection issues, environmental mm -hmm. issues, civil rights, civil liberties. Uh, you know, a HMO reform, uh, in insurance issues, and I have a, a record of recognized leadership on these issues that matter to the people of Connecticut. Neither of my opponents can point to any meaningful accomplishment in the, in the public sector on, on these issues that matter to the broad public interest. Well, it's, it's certainly going to be uh, interesting to see, and as you suggest, uh, there's a primary for the Republicans uh, in advance of that, <coughs> so I, I may have been a little... Uh, uh, preemptive in my assessment, but uh, she had looked to be the the leader going into this thing. Anyway, we'll see how it how it all plays out. Um, come come November, uh, if in fact you are uh, the one who is elected, uh, what is that going to mean to the to the people of the state? You suggested that uh, you're following in in Dick Blumenthal's philosophy and footsteps along the way. What changes do you see that uh, you would like to make that? Uh, that aren't underway now. Well, in, in, in before I talk about changes, you know, I, I'm going to stress continuity. I, again, uh, I really do share Dick's outlook on on the job. Uh, I do share his values. I think he's he has really set the gold standard for what a uh, state attorney general can and ought to be. I'm sure you uh, want to put your stamp and on, and on and the I, office. You know, I, I actually, you know, I succeeded him once before. Uh, I was in the state house of representatives. I helped him run for. Attorney General in, in 1990, and I took his seat in the state uh, Senate when he did it. So I'm I'm accustomed to uh, stepping into his shoes. I actually have you mentioned it before. I actually have size 16 feet. So uh, <laughs> uh, they, uh, I know Dick doesn't. <laughs> so I, you know, I'm I'm not trying to be the second Dick Blumenthal. Yeah. I'm I'm uh, just going to be the as I have before, and I think I did pretty well uh, 
going to be the first George Jepson, and uh, I will bring my own priorities and, and, and style to the office. I, um, I mentioned before some of the priorities that I think are demanded by the Times, which are uh, things like uh, bringing in more revenues to the state by stepped-up enforcement on, uh, on the black market economy that's out there. It's um, uh, trying to create a business-friendly climate in the state, M you know, my own passion for, for uh, preserving what's left of Connecticut's natural historical mm -hmm. historical heritage. Uh, you know, I'll bring my own personal style. I'm not a, a, a litigator by by background. I've, I have litigation experience, uh, but um, uh, you know, I think my skill is bringing is solving problems, bringing people uh, from both sides. Uh, to sit around a table. On a lot of issues, it is black and white. It is right and wrong. But on a whole lot of issues, it's gray on gray. And, and neither side is completely right nor completely wrong. That's and what makes law, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, and, and one of my skills as majority leader of the Senate for six years was, was putting people around a table and, and solving the problem. And so I think you'll, that's an approach I'm going to take as Attorney General. That's. Uh something that a lot of people don't fully understand. Uh, they think uh, law is black and white and so forth, but gray is certainly the operative in most cases, yes, isn't it? Yes, certainly. Uh, you know, sometimes you have uh, state laws that are in conflict with, an, with, it, with one another, state laws that are ambiguous in, in what they are trying to reach and trying to say, and, and, uh, and so that's, that's why it's an art and not a science. Well, now, for... Uh, for the uh, uh, legislature and the interface with, uh, with you, your experience probably will stand uh, them and you in good stead, having, uh, having walked in their shoes. Well, and that, and that's, the another big part of the, that's another big part of the job. I think uh, one of the, when I get in there, I'm, I'm going to be, first of all, looking to establish you know, professional relationships with the 185 lawyers that are in that office. They, if, if you're going to get the most out of them, you have to have strong working relationships, and that means, like Dick Blumenthal has done, setting an example uh, for the office. Another thing you're going to be doing is, is uh, you know, pushing, uh, coming up with and pushing a legislative agenda. And this is another thing that distinguishes me from either of my Republican opponents. I have real experience in in driving issues successfully in the Connecticut General Assembly. What, what do you see as some of the priorities in that in that regard? Uh, issues that, that uh, really do need to be worked on by the legislature, which, which you know, has obviously been frustrated at working on a lot of different things. When we were up for the closure of the session, uh, they were walking away with, well, dozens, maybe hundreds of bills that, uh, that didn't get looked at. We're going to be looking at some, some privacy issues. I think one of the areas where Dick has performed extremely well is is on issues of, of privacy uh, in this age of technology. Uh, you know, the, um, uh, it increasingly, it is an issue, uh, and so I'm going to take a hard look at that. I'm going to uh, take a hard look at continuing his focus on Facebook yep, and some yep, of the social yep, uh, yep, media yep. along the way. And um, I I environmental issues that, that are important to me, and, and uh, uh, so those are those are two things that I'll be looking at. And the other, uh, another is um, again, we do have a real underground economy in the state and it makes it hard for honest businesses to to survive and to thrive uh, and so I'm going to look at what we can do to, to um, tighten up some of our laws on misclassification of, of workers as, as subcontractors. Now you, you, you were mentioning something like seven to ten percent is that? That's that's the, the, is that the so number that, that's banned. Of course it's it underground about, so nobody yeah. really knows. Yeah, but I, I, we're, we're not Greece you know with 27 percent yeah. but uh, you never know for sure but it, it does uh, result in the state losing a huge desperate, number. desperately needed revenues. Uh, workers who see their rights uh, trampled on, they don't get the, the benefits or the, the Social Security, for example, that they are entitled to. And then uh, perhaps most importantly, legitimate businesses, businesses that do play by the rules, uh, can't, uh, can't compete. And so the only winner is the, is the business that does cheat. Is a percentage of that business that comes in from out of the state, or is, it, uh, is, is that lot, 7 to 10 figure in state? Principle. A lot of it is, is um, uh, contractors, for example, who come in from out of state, uh, and then they bring workers with them. Uh, you know, it's and uh, uh, legitimate contractors can't compete if if you're if you're playing by the rules and you're paying some benefits and you're and you're uh, uh, paying social security and workers' compensation, unemployment compensation taxes. How do you compete against a fly-by-night like that? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, again, it's this is not 
and this kind of enforcement is not anti-business, it's pro-business because it means that the in-state contractors who do play by the rules uh, can compete on a level playing field. 